Tonight, when Australian companies began moving their call centres overseas, we were constantly reassured our personal information was safe. But that guarantee has now proved to be hollow. Three major telcos have found customer information sold, exposing critical privacy issues in the digital age. David Richardson has more. How would you know if your private information is going to be safe with offshore workers? It's pretty clear that there have been significant security breaches in this particular instance. It appears as a series of zeros and ones in cyberspace. In reality, it's our personal information. And it's now come to light that some offshore call centres and processing companies have been secretly selling Australians' personal information and we didn't have a clue. We shouldn't really be shocked. Uh, because call centre operators in India, for example, earn about $2 an hour. So if they're offered 200 bucks, that gives them a total of three and a half weeks' wages. Mumbai, India, the city of dreams and one of the world's call centre capitals. It's here the scam emerged, that a fake company was selling information. Names, addresses, phone records, you name it. What I'm more concerned about is, do they know where your children go to school? Do they know what kind of music you listen to? Do they know your preference of food when you order via online services? That's the sort of stuff that actually you have a right to that individual privacy. Tim Norton from Digital Rights Watch has been warning of breaches like this for years. It's one of the reasons we need a properly resourced information commissioner. Uh, it's one of the reasons that we actually need a government that's equipped to actually understand what's happening and put in place the proper protocols to protect users and citizens' data. This scam would have gone completely undetected but for one simple mistake. An Indian company calling a firm here in Melbourne asking if they were willing to sell sensitive customer information. The Australian company refused, then blew the whistle on the scam. The problem is, no one knows how long it's been going on. The scale of the sale of information and the disclosure of private information must be very, very large indeed. Spencer Zivcek is a professor of law and the immediate past president of the country's largest civil rights watchdog. He's concerned at our lack of information privacy and security overseas. It places a, a huge onus on the companies that contract with commercial security agencies overseas to make sure that uh, there are sufficient contractual provisions to ensure that the information doesn't get leaked. We are in an ever-changing world where the future is always difficult to predict. What began as dingy, overcrowded call centre rooms years ago have grown into a multi-billion dollar outsourcing industry, powerhouse businesses in their own right. For numerous clients across continents. They offer security, safety, integrity, and in many cases, they do deliver. But there are two strands to this offshore outsourcing debate. I think it's disgusting. They're taking Australian jobs overseas. They're taking Australian money, so they should be employing Australians. This woman, who wishes to remain anonymous, works at a major Australian multi-state company set to move its call and processing centres overseas, where workers are cheaper than her. So they won't be getting paid very much, so the, it might be attractive to sell our information to make extra money. It's scary. Australian Federal Police are now investigating this latest security breach. With companies desperate to cut costs, overseas outsourcers are growing even more popular, which raises the ultimate question. Who owns our information? Us or someone else? In Australia, I think we have a serious problem over digital rights. We don't have enshrined human rights. We don't, and therefore, we don't have digital rights. It's a fair bet it will happen again. It's a fair bet that it's happening today. Yep. That's scary. That's scary. That's scary.